I'm Dr. Ernest Jackson, and I'm honored to share with you the living Word of God. We're continuing to talk about the Holy Ghost, and we're going to overlap from last week when we begin to talk about capacity. So, the topic or the continuation of the topic of the Holy Ghost in this message will be filled to what capacity? Filled to what capacity? Now, you can fill up a glass of water, you can fill up a pitcher of water, you can fill up a tub of water, you can fill up a lake of water. Certain things are never filled, though. Think about that. Certain things that are never filled. Let's see. Uh, if I'm correct, I think streams flow. They have something to do with the flowing of the water from the mountains. So you have streams that flow and rivers that flow. As long as there is a source above it that has water coming down, there is a constant flow. So what if the capacity we would put on something is only within the generalization of our own understanding and is very limited, and we surmise what God meant without checking first. It's a, it's a wonder to me how we <laughs> how we figure out or have we how we think we figured out God. Watch this. So some of us got a couple of kids, a couple of one, two, three, maybe, you know. And as they're growing up, they're about four or five years old, and they just beginning to really feel themselves and they get wayward and disobedient. And we say something like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with that boy. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that girl. I just can't figure her out. Ever had that happen? Ever said that? It don't make sense to me. I just can't figure it out. Let's, well, let's just see what happens. That ever happened to you? Yeah. So, please tell me how we figured out God's way of doing stuff and aren't around Him as often as we were around our four and five year old. How do we do that? Or how do we think we do that? This is why back months I talked about perception beginning to understand what real perception of things is and by going by the Word of God. So this way, when we come forward to where we are now, we would perceive some things. Some things are locked so that you can't. In hearing, you shall not understand. In seeing, you shall not perceive. This is prophetic. It came this way toward us, but <laughs> eyes hath not seen, nor ears heard, neither have entered into the heart of men, the things that God has prepared for them that love Him. And loving Him is not just a passion. Oh, I love the Lord. He talks about those that have my commandments and keep it them. It is He that loves me. So do we love God with a passion? Or do we love God on the level of what love He wants and will accept? It's important to know that because... That's how he perceives things. That's how he as a God wants things. So now we figured out what full means. And full means, you know, something that is filled to almost, because we know when we say it's full, a glass is full. Usually the glass ain't full. Did you know that? The glass is not full until it's completely full, which the definition of full means almost full or full. Which would mean you have to level it off. You might say, well, that don't make no sense. But that's the definition of full. So what if you and I, and our perception of things, which we have done for years, figured out we're filled with the Holy Ghost, and that's why I said this for the topic, if I would use one, filled to what capacity? Uh, when is an ocean filled? At high tide <laughs> or low tide? <laughs> when is a river filled? 
when there's a stream filled? Don't answer. I found something that was really cute I thought I'd share, which I was doing some research yesterday. And as I was doing some research, the Holy Ghost said to me, he said, you know, you know the, he said, you know the story about the woman at the well? Where Jesus was and you know, the woman came to get water and he asked her to give me drink? I said, yeah. He said, did you know that there was a depiction <laughs> of capacity in there that the Christian has never seen? Uh, uh, no, I didn't know that. He told me to go look. So here I looked. And here we're looking. Ready? <laughs> John the 4th chapter and the 7th verse. John 4 and 7. John, St. John the 4th chapter and the 7th verse and reads thus. Then cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were going away into the city to buy me. Okay? Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? Because the Samarians, Samaritans and the Jews didn't get along. Actually, the Jews considered them to be dogs. So he had no dealings with the Samaritans. You know that. Jesus said unto her, If you knew if thou knowest, watch this, if thou knowest the gift of God, if you realize what God is really trying to give you, lady, <laughs> and who it is that saith to thee, give me drink, thou wouldest have asked him, and he would have given thee living water. Hmm. The woman said to her, sir, said to him, sir, thou have nothing to draw with. And the well is steep. You're going to get this stuff, you're going to get this water that we have. You've got to have something to get down there because it's deep. You need something to get down in there because it's deep. Now watch this. Say, art thou, uh, uh, art thou greater than our father Jacob that gave us this well and drank thereof him, himself? and his children and his cattle. Are you greater than him? And Jesus answered and said unto her, Tell you what, lady, whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. If you, even though it's deep and it's been feeding, you know, I mean, feeding the thirst of people for thousands of years. Watch this. He said, I get that. But whoever drink of this is going to thirst again. For whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. Oh, oh, oh. Your capacity, woman, would be filled forever. How much water would you have to drink to be filled forever? How much water would it take for you to be filled forever? And watch what the woman said. And he said, but the water I give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him. Okay. Shall be in him a well of water springing up. And you look at the definitions in the enemy, gushing forward. Springing up unto everlasting life. A well in him. Hmm. And... I'm a city boy from Brooklyn, but from what I understood, since I moved south about wells, you dig a well a certain way because the water flows deep under the ground and you got to dig so deep to hit the well. And when you hit the well, it's going to produce water nonstop, all things being equal. So there's something going wrong on, you know, the, the geometric table under there and it blocks the water. So then I'm going to say unto him, sir, Get, look, give me this water that I thirst not. And guess what? Neither cometh hither to draw. I ain't coming back if you got that kind of water. 
You know, it's talking about go get your husband, this, that, that, and the other. She said, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Watch this. The conversation goes on, goes on. He brings it up. He said, you, you said we should worship in this mountain. We said we should worship at Jerusalem. And salvation is of the Jews. You, you don't even know what you worship. Most of us stand on heard beliefs rather than the truth. Ay, ay, ay. Most of us stand on her beliefs rather than concrete truth. And it's deceptive and it's misguided. And people don't mean to do it. I, I, I would wager that people didn't mean to guide us in the wrong direction. But did they mean to guide us in the right direction by searching out truth? No, they didn't. Am I finding fault? Yes, I am. Because as Pastors, elders, whatever we call ourselves, we should be feeding the body a revealed truth that will cause them to grow and to develop in God. And we're not doing it. So, Jesus told the woman, said, the water that I have to give you, it's going to be a well springing up in him unto eternal life. Capacity, a well. Not a cup. You ain't got nothing to draw from. The well is deep. So Jesus is saying, but what I want to give you, the what I want to give you is much deeper than that. It's much broader than that. So it'll be in him. So now wait a minute. If it's going to be in him, the same one is going to be that in him. Going to be that in you. Going to be that in me. Going to be that in everybody that comes under God of Christ the way he wants to. Look at all the wells springing up unto everlasting life. What is the limit? What is the capacity? We have no idea. What if that is what has happened to us in thinking that we're filled with the Holy Ghost? We limit the Holy One of Israel by not understanding what God intended and conjuring up our own idea of capacity. I hope that wasn't too strong. Let's watch this. Let's go over. Back to Acts. We'll pick up from Acts last week. So in Acts, the second chapter, we're going to read the first four verses. And we're going to show you in the verses that what we thought God was saying, He was not saying. This is why uh, I've taught my people, those that fellowship with me, I've taught them how to do research in the Greek and in the Hebrew. So we'll understand what the Spirit was trying to communicate to us in the original language and those that language and those that translated it translated it clear enough for us to grasp more truth than we have okay and then we got the spirit of god that's going to guide us into all truth we got it made don't know it watch this watch this and when the day of pentecost was fully come there were there were all with one of the they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of the rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. We've read this numerous times. So now in the Two verses, the second verse, I believe that is, yes, the second verse and the fourth verse. I want to show you two words. In the second verse, it says, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house. It filled all the house. Watch. Fourth verse. And they, be, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, I said on last week that when I did research on field, I looked at uh, 44 different places in the Gospels and an act that had field in it. And the definitions begin to differ. Four and five, I think. At least five different definitions out of the 44. So they, they vary different ones back and forth out of the 44 places you could find. So, 
Let's go to the second verse and look at filled. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house. Now, if you look at the numbers, filled there is 4137. You go down to uh, the fourth verse, and filled there is 4130. Both of them in the 41 range. Well, one is, one is 4137, and one is 4130, which means the definitions are not the same. In the Greek, and in the Hebrew, and or Chaldean, there's a lot of words that are used different ways than what we use them in English. So, watch this. Let's go to the second verse. And look up what it says about filled. And they were all filled. And the word filled there means to replete, that is to cram, level up, to furnish, imbuse, refuse, satisfy, finish, verify, it's got different ones, complete, end, expire, fill, fully, see, perfect supply. So that means when the Russian mighty wind filled the house where they were sitting, it filled it completely entirely. Replete means to take a place and fill back. So it said fully. So what it did, whatever air was going on in there, the Spirit of God, I mean the, the Russian mighty wind came in and filled the whole place, meaning completely. Now, let's go down <laughs> to the fourth verse. And it says, uh, mm, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh, well, mm, the filled with the Holy Ghost is not the same word. It's not the same definition. Not the same expression in its original language. So I would ask you a question. Watch this. Filled. And it says down here, once you get dressed up, it does say fill and has imbued, but it says influence. Especially to fill, fulfill time or accomplish. The Holy Ghost had to come forth in a certain time and accomplish certain things, but it came to fill the people, watch this, it filled them to influence them and supply them or empower them to speak with other tongues. It is not the same word when the wind by the Holy Ghost came in and filled the whole house. It's not the same definition. So, this being God's word, don't you think he would know what word to imply and put in place and so men would interpret it? Because, see, not one jot or tittle will pass from his word, you know. Heaven and earth will pass away first, so God knew what he had said said and set to be revealed, only we didn't know it. Now, what if the capacity that it filled the house, the Russian mighty wind filled the house, was meant just to fill the house, that capacity? But what if God didn't put filled as far as us being filled with the Holy Ghost with the same definition because what if there's different capacities? <laughs> and I'm going to show you that there are. There is so much that God had done in man originally that we would never see it except we search the scriptures or the Holy Ghost would reveal it to us. Like I showed you over in John. Here's Jesus talking to a woman Samaritan saying, listen, you know what? He that comes and get this water that I have to offer, he shall never thirst. For out of him shall flow, without out of him shall come a wellspring gushing up to everlasting life. A well out inside of a man? that has so much of a flow 
that he don't ever have to come back or the refreshing of this water he won't have to need any more refreshing at all sound limited to you of course it doesn't oh Jesus oh, let's do something else so what if <laughs> what if when you start off in God you have a certain capacity but he wants to increase you what if he wanted to enlarge you example you had a child right we were children weren't we you remember what some of the stuff we ate then and you know we had had this and had a little bit of that and as we grew our capacity to consume grew then our capacity to consume needed to be strong enough, well enough, balanced enough to strengthen our human frame and enable us to be men and women, right? But we did increase. What if God meant for you to increase or and himself to increase in you? John, the third chapter, and the 30th verse, a, a, a seemingly familiar scripture. It'll be a little different in a few seconds. <laughs> Let's go to John 3 and 30. John 3 and 30. So John is talking about, I brought this out a little bit last week. So John is talking about, you know, the bridegroom, he, he gets the woman, I'm standing beside him, this is my honor, you know, my joy is fulfilled, that's what he says in the 29th verse. But the 30th verse, he says, he must increase, but I must decrease. So, let's look what he meant by increase. Look at the definition of the word increase. That is enlarge. To grow. To increase. So watch this. He must be enlarged in me. I must decrease in myself, but he must be enlarged in me. And if he is enlarged in me, well, he's enlarged in me. Isn't that going to enlarge me? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's look at another one. Colossians the second chapter and the 18th verse Colossians 2 and 18 Paul wrote to the Colossian church and let no man beguile you don't nobody trick you of your reward in the voluntarily voluntary humility and worshiping of angels intruding in those things which he hath not seen don't let people guide you in the stuff they ain't even seen when they take and all this and all that and all that did you see it? did you experience what did ask questions so you, if you ask enough questions you'll back them down from their lie whoops you back them down from their lie because people are deceptive watch this those things which you have not seen vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. Oh, because most of us are wannabes. Then there's some of us don't want to be other than a servant. Oh God, did I say that? Yeah. We're wannabes. I want to be the greatest evangelist that ever lived. I want to be the bitty 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 scooby dooby doo. No, 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 no. Be the greatest servant that you can be. And whatever he does in and through us, watch this, will be accepted by him because he did the work. That's all I'm interested in. The rest, y'all divided, <laughs> y'all divided amongst yourselves. <laughs> I don't want it. Thank you. <laughs> that is too funny. Watch this. <laughs> and not holding the head from which all the body by joints 
and bands, and that means ligaments, the bands, you know, the joints and the ligaments that hold them together, the bands, having nourishment ministered. Oh, the nourishment is ministered by the Spirit of God. Watch this. And knitted together, watch this, increases with the increase of God. Oh, oh. It increases with the increase of God. Well, let's look at what these increases look. It knitted together, say it increases, continues to increase. Look what it says. It means to enlarge. It continues to enlarge with the increase, the with the growth of God. Oh, so this is showing from what John said, and what Paul is saying to the Colossians church. That God, as we walk in Him, He enlarges us with the increase of God. So, your capacity changes. Because if He increases you and enlarges you, that's to hold more than you already do. And this takes place by the word in us, and we don't know it. It's a, this, this is the, one of the operations of God. He'll enlarge you as you feed on his word. And the Holy Ghost who is right there, he sees whether we love God or not. And if we're feeding on the word, and he doeth the work, he enlarged us. Because it's God that worketh all and in you, all and in us, all if we yield it. <clears throat> Okay, <laughs> I showed on last week. <laughs> this is funny. Luke eleven through Luke eleven eleven through thirteen. So God God didn't mean the capacity in the limit of the fullness of what we thought because there are different fullnesses. There are different capacities. There's different stage of enlargement in God that we never paid attention to. Watch this. Luke 11 and 11 through 13. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will you give him a stone? No. Or if he asks a fish, Will he for a fish give him a, a serpent? No. If you're a real father, you don't do that. Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? Not a real father. No, 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 no. The scorpion won't kill him. If ye then be evil, in comparison to God, you being evil, you know how to give good gifts unto your children. That double dot, that what is that called? Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, I can't think of the name of it. I'm not seeing it. But it means an explanation or a list of things. A colon, semicolon, one, yeah, sem a colon. Okay, so how much more? Now you're talking about giving your Holy Ghost, how much more? We have been taught to believe that the speaking in tongues and the shouting is the hallmark of the Holy Ghost. It's not. It's just a manifestation that comes by him being in there and let me do it this way it's the friends benefits cause it's not it's not the main objective the main objective is him to be in there to change our character and to feed us the word and reveal the word to us and reveal Jesus to us how much revelation have you had in your Christian lifetime and where did it come from? Did it come from the Word? Did it come from the Holy Ghost? Or did it come from books that we read and we misread those because people miswrote them? Whew. Oh, okay. How 
how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Ghost to them that ask Him? I saw something today that was scary. For those of us that are filled to whatever capacity, <laughs> have we even asked God for more? A greater development, a greater manifestation of the Holy Ghost so we can go forward and fulfill His purpose for our lives in our lifetime. At his pace. At his pace and his timing. When Jesus came forth in the fullness of time. What are we doing in the fullness of time? Has our time come yet? We don't know. Are we making any preparation to find out? That's what scares me. We're too comfortable. Way too comfortable. Anybody remember this? Woe unto them that are at ease as Zion. Sometimes we get at ease. Watch what I'm going to say. Duck all the folks. Duck. Once we get 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 70 I'm not counting any plus because <laughs> it's going to go too far. We get up in age, we figure, <laughs> I'm an old man. I'm an old woman. And we judge that by what? Our relatives, I'm not even selling anybody. By our friends, by what we believe old to be. So if we were old, what was Methuselah? These folks are living 900 years and we think we old because we're 70 plus. We're just, <clears throat> I don't know about you, I am comfortably mature. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> and I'm having a ball. And I want to live long enough to fulfill my purpose. Then I do like Paul did live in a hired house where people come in and I can share the word of God with but there is no retirement. Paul sat down maybe because old age got him. Well he'd been in jail and all stuff he'd been through. God bless the brother if he had a hired house. But what are we doing? Are we asking for more of the Holy Ghost? Do we really look this is why I'm sharing these things so we can look and say, you know what? That crazy dude, Dr. Jackson, shared this and shared that. He made me a little uncomfortable with this, but it was scripture. So if it's in the Word, haven't we figured out that we need it? Because we don't have it. That's what I go by. As soon as the Word reveals something to me that I'm not familiar with, I bow before the Word of God because we forgot this. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him. Hallelujah, glory, glory, glory. We try to worship him in spirit, but the scripture said must worship him in spirit and in truth. Is your heart going up before God the same way? When you're praising, do you go before the word of God the same way? Is your heart rent? When we go before God in prayer, we sit down in the sackcloth and ashes, and when we go before the word, we fall asleep. Is your heart torn the same way? <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, I hope y'all are having a good time because I is. Let me show you something about capacity that we're not looking at. So, in the 12th chapter of Matthews, Jesus was talking about when the time came, like in the 12th chapter, in the 42nd verse, when the queen of the south would rise up in judgment of this generation and different things like that. And then Jesus just went off. <laughs> he just went off, went off on a tangent. Watch this. 43rd verse of the 12th chapter of Matthew. And he just goes, When unclean spirit is going out of a man, he walked through dry places, seeking rest, because he... When he's not in someone tormenting someone, he's being tormented by the torment that is in him. And he's seeking rest. And guess what he finds? He don't find any. So, then says he, the unclean, unclean spirit, I will return unto my house from whence I came out. Know this, once God has set you free, if you've been bound by an unclean spirit, doesn't matter what kind it is, that unclean spirit claims you as its dwelling place, as its home. Watch. I'll go back once I came out and when he has come, 
Watch this. Show you something that we didn't see. When he has come back, he find you, me, empty. Swept, we done got delivered, and garnished. The Lord delivers us again. He tried to fix up the place. <laughs> watch this. And he sees swept and garnished. He goes, watch what he do. Then go with he. He don't just bring seven other spirits. He comes back and see if it's acceptable for him to live there again. Then he goes back and gets seven other spirits. Look at the book. Then he then go with he and take us with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Capacity. Are you really full? Watch this. So, we would think that one spirit in us being cast out, that that was our capacity. No, he goes and he gets seven other. Did you notice that he gets seven other spirits more wicked than himself? You would think if he got more, some spirits who were more wicked than himself, he would be subjected to them. But he was the one that was in there. He's the one that you would accept or I would accept back into our lives. So he slides his partners in there knowing that if they all come in, our last state is worse than our first. So we got to ask ourselves, here is a man that we thought might have been filled with an unclean spirit. But all of a sudden, the spirit is cast out and the unclean spirit goes forward and brings seven other spirits more wicked than himself. So now whatever this man had in him or this woman had in her, they got eight times as much of a problem than they had before. Who would know that you could have eight times your capacity inside of you at once? Sound like it's full? One would sound like it's full, two or three would sound like it's full, but now he's got eight. So there's a greater uh, fullness inside of man, if I could say that, that could handle more than his original capacity. Oh. Go to numbers. I'll show you that it's factual. The enemy knows it. God knows it. You and I might as well know it. Ready? Numbers 11 and 16. So when you get over there, Numbers 11 16, I'm going to bring us up to uh, speed here. So Here's the people complaining about the stuff they wanted. They complained and they complained to Moses and Moses got all bent out of shape and he went to God and he's complaining to God about the people complaining to him. And he goes, you know what? God, look, I didn't birth these people. They're not children out of my bowels. I didn't, you know, you got me out here and this and that and that and that da 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 This is too much for me, God. If you, you think I can carry this, I can't carry it. Why don't you just kill me and get it over with? Kill me. <laughs> You go up to the <laughs> go up to the 15th verse, <laughs> oh, and you see that he, he told God, "Kill me. You gonna deal with me this way? Just kill me." So watch the 16th verse. And the Lord said unto Moses, "Gather me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be elders." of the people and officers over them and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation that they may stand there with thee. Go get me 70 guys, Mo. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. You can make, look, check them out. See those that are elders and officers among the people, you know, that are proven elders and bring them with, bring them with you into the tabernacle. Now watch what he says. And I'm going to come down and talk with you there. And I will take of, look, I will take of the spirit which is upon thee. Oh! And will put it upon them, and they shall bear the burden of the people with thee, that thou bear it not thyself alone. 
first of all, Moses wasn't getting out of being, being in this position. God said, look, come get you some help. But you won't have to bear it alone. But you got to bear it. You ain't going to bear it alone. But wait a minute. God said, I'll come down and I'm going to put my hands on you and transfer this unto 70 men. What was the capacity of Moses that after God took what was on him and put it on 70 men and he still had authority and power left in him? So he's carrying the capacity of more than 70 men at once. Filled to what capacity? <laughs> if we were filled with the Spirit of God like Moses was, that we had 70 times what the average person had, we, we would never stop speaking in tongues. We never, <laughs> we, we never stop running. Somebody open the front door, pow, there we go. Running down the street. Happy feet all the time. Speaking in all kinds of tongues, not understanding the word we say. Oops, we'll, we'll go back to that. We'll get back to that in a week or so. Yeah. But we were, look, but the scripture had said that the Spirit of God was given to him or Jesus without measure. Hmm. Uh, maybe we speak too quick. Okay, let's go over. to Mark the fifth chapter. And we want to get to the seventh verse, but I'm gonna, while you're doing that, I'm gonna bring us up to snuff. So there's this guy out there and <laughs> he's out there among the tombs, he's cutting this self. They they put feathers and bands and chains on him. He break them all off and he living out there in the tombs. No man could buy him. He was cutting himself with rocks and this dude but then if you look at the sixth verse all this craziness, howling at night and during the day. Jesus shows up and he sees Jesus afar off. Jesus we know. Paul we know. Who are you? He saw him afar off. So this, whatever this spirit was in him, wasn't as crazed as people thought. Because it recognized Jesus afar off. Thought I'd let you know that. Watch this. He ran and worshipped him. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Wait a minute, you just was, you howling day and night. Now you know, you, you can pray, you can worship the Lord now. Mmm, <laughs> crying with loud voice. I don't, but what, what, what I have to do with thee? Thou art the Son of God. The Most High, I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. When you showed up, Jesus, you're tormenting me. Let me tell you a secret about the anointing. I'll put it this way. He that ministereth, wait on ministry. Don't jump out there and God ain't put nothing definitive on your life. Because unclean spirits will recognize you when you walk in the door. <clears throat> Just put it that way and leave it right there. Right there. But he said unto him, Come out of the man, that unclean spirit. And he asked him, Could he wait? He asked him, uh, What is your name? And he answered him, Excuse me, he answered saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Now, if you look up the definition of Legion, in your strongest often concordance, you'll find that it's going to say regiment. And the definition of the word regiment back in that day were Roman regiments. And the regiment numbered anywhere from 4,200 men to 5,000 men. So now here is a man whose capacity somehow on the inside is holding or has a dwelling of up to 5,000 unclean spirits. To what capacity was he filled? Mm -mm. Yeah, I 
don't just mean I'm crazy like this. You just have to work with a brother. I did. Okay. Let's go to John. I want to show you something. Because we're comfortable with our own imagined capacity. We block what God really wants to do in us. And we don't even know it. We've all done it. We'll all do it if we don't teach the body of Christ the truth of the issue. Let's do this. John 14 and 21. And so Jesus is speaking and he says, uh, you know what? He that hath my commandments, John 14, 21, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them. He it is that love, loveth me. And he shall be he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. And I will love him. And you know what I'm gonna do? When I distinguish the proper love. I'm going to love him, my father's going to love him, and you know what? I will manifest myself to him. That's why many of us don't have, you know, manifestations of God. We just go by faith, of what we call faith, which is just believing and hope. Because faith and believing and hope are not the same thing. So we, we, we believe in God for this and believe in God, and we're hoping that. But he says, I will manifest myself unto him. Right? Okay. So, John, I mean, um, Judas, not this is car, some other guy. He asked, well, how are you going to manifest yourself to, to, to us and not to the world? And Jesus said this in the 23rd verse. She said, and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words. And my father will love him. And we will come unto him. Me and the Father will come unto him and make our abode. Oh, so where unclean spirits could come in by the thousands and make an abode. Jesus said, if you love me, I'm going to manifest myself unto, unto you. And I and my Father, we're going to come and dwell in you. Wait. So, if you're filled with the Holy Ghost, for real, even if you feel for real, He's revealing the truth, you're obeying His voice the whole nine yards to whatever fuller capacity you're living in, there's still room. Oh, God, there's still room. Because Jesus said, I will manifest myself, and then if you keep my words, I and my Father are going to come and make our abode. We're going to come and live in Him. Wait a minute. So, besides speaking in tongues, you mean to tell me that I can have the Holy Ghost living in me and Jesus living in me and the Father living in me? That's what the Scripture just said. <laughs> Chelsea, yeah, much learning does make thee mad. You crazy as a bed bug. No. Let's do this. Because I want to get these in. John 7 and 37. <laughs> so, filled to what capacity? John 7 and 37. In the last day of the great feast of the last day of the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, If any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Okay. Sound like what we showed you in John 4. What? But wait. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given. They were going to receive that of him by the Spirit of God, because the Holy Ghost wasn't given. They were going to get that fullness right then. And they will. Wouldn't it be something if he had a, a, a strain flowing out of you? 
Wouldn't it be something if you had a river flowing out of you? He said rivers. So what capacity is accessible in a man that he could have rivers flowing out of him? Or wellsprings springing up unto everlasting life? What is it in man that you, is accessible to so much? What if in Christ it was much more than we imagined? I'm not going to read it, but you can look it up in uh, Colossians, the second chapter, the sixth through the ninth verse, and down there it'll tell you, it'll give you some precautions, and then it'll tell you something like this. For in him that is in Christ, in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. How in the world was the whole Godhead bodily put inside of flesh? How did that happen? If we look at being filled with the Holy Ghost as a completion, or as an end. This is it. That's it. No, but if you being able to have to give good just good to your children, how much more will your Heavenly Father give you the Holy Ghost that automatically changes your capacity to a greater fullness that He can flow through when He wants to. Now, let's do this because my time is running. And I want to make sure I get this last one in. Let's go to Ephesians, the third chapter. And the 17th verse, Ephesians 3 and 17. So Paul is telling the Ephesian church, he said, listen, that Christ may dwell in you, Ephesians 3 and 17, that Christ may dwell in your heart by persuasion, that ye being rooted first and grounded in love may be able to comprehend what all saints. <clears throat> what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height and to know the love of Christ which passeth all knowledge that ye might be filled, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Oh! The enemy has tricked us into ba 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 and, and falling down and getting back up and I'm not making fun, but he's tricked us. And got us stagnant there because we're not looking for more. We're not looking for more. We're looking for what we saw our forefathers have and what our forefathers believed and not looking into the face of God's word to see what he has to say. And I got one for you. How about this? This is going to be the kicker. Hebrews the 6th chapter and the first verse. Now in the 5th chapter it talks about you know, having the word in you and have your senses exercised to discern both good and evil. This and that, and that you know, he obeys if you don't have the word in like you should. So then he continues to write, and here's what he writes in the sixth chapter and the first verse. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. Oh, snap. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptism, of laying on of hands, and the resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permit, and he does permit. There is a fullness to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. But remember, it was given to him without measure. But it says about a perfect man to you before you get to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So, have we limited the Holy One of Israel in our own dull perception? Surely we have, because we haven't even looked in the Scriptures. We go by what we're taught, we believe what we're taught, but what we're taught is not what the book says to the end of the matter. 
So there's left too much space and time for presumption and assuming, and therefore we're misguided. Look at the God of heaven and earth. What a wonderful thing. What is man that thou art mindful of us? Or the son of men that you should even visit us? Whatever value he sees in us, let him honor that by manifesting himself in us and to us. Not limited to the Holy One of Israel. I mean, remember, remember. I'll tell you something that we don't realize about in Genesis. So, when you get down to the, the God, you know, and even in the morning with the first day, and even on the third day, even in the and we don't realize when you get down to the fourth day that there was evenings and mornings and there was no sun, no moon at all. Oh, how do you have evenings and mornings with no sun and no moon? Well, he was the light that was there so when the earth rotated around a full rotation he called it evening and morning. Because it had to have some light to do it with. And it wasn't on automatic like he said it at the end of the fourth day. So look at our God. Who is from everlasting to everlasting. And what capacity lies within a man. The ability to hold and uh, house, if you will. That the Godhead. We can be filled, we can be filled, no we aren't, but we have the capability of being filled with the fullness of God. Whatever he breathed into Adam, and it, it, with the breath of life from the Hebrew Peshaw, whatever he breathed in there, that capacity lies within us and more because we're children of Christ now, adopted by God. So we have access to more. Now, am I just doing this to, you know, it's like slap in the face what we believe? No, I'm just saying we didn't believe to the end of the matter. We didn't search it out to have a greater stand or an understanding. We limit his work by limiting our understanding. You may not know this, but if I can see it, I'm trying to find the chapter. I can't see it clear. I don't know whether it's 11 chapter of uh, 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 um, uh, Isaiah, but it talks about when Christ came forward, he would make him of a quick understanding. You can look up that expression, a quick understanding. He made him of a quick understanding, and us being born of Christ, we have access to be made of a quick understanding.